oftentimes successful people have to trade like am i going to make money or am i going to be like a present father right mm -hmm. i'm like yo i could actually make money to afford to put my kid in private school but actually be there with her too this is a win-win coming up on the melanin money show right and so i didn't have that option when you grind in 12 hours a day jumping on flights all over the place so i finally got an opportunity to sit still and that would not have happened i would not have seen my daughter take her first step so that wasn't for the position we're in to sell our business if that's the model of building wealth how can i get closer right to that same logic right? how can i get closer to right. the business nothing, there's nothing closer than owning the business and exiting it right and that was the paradigm shift that i had it's like it's all the same just like how close are you to the business you know what I mean? so you mentioned uh the process of acquiring assets building a value and then ultimately setting selling how do you build a value in the business or what's some of the best way you've seen people build up true value in a business so that they can start to exit what's up guys welcome back to another episode of the Melon and Money Show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a good one, man. We already had a podcast before the podcast. Supposed to start 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we got my brother Gamal on the show, man. How you feeling, brother? What up? What up? Yes, sir. Right, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, man. High level conversation beforehand. We should have honestly should've recorded it. Recorded. Yeah, that should have been recorded. That should have been recorded, yeah. but we'll get to some of it today. But like, you know, yeah. everything can't be, can be good, free. Man. But nah, <laughs> um, so this has been a long time coming. I remember the first time we were supposed to be on the show was Black Equity Con. We tried to make it happen in 2022, that last year. I have no idea. What yeah, time it was last anymore, year. Yeah, Black Equity Con last year. Um, we were both at the both at the event. We had, we, you know, we were getting a couple of podcasts done. I think you did Dominique Broadway's that, at the time. Mm -hmm. And there's just some other times when, like, you know, we were going to be in the same city trying to make the stars align. And so my brother was in Art Basel last night. I saw, like, I was like, I, I saw because I didn't know you were going to be in Art Basel. Like, Are you in my Art Basel yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, bro. I was at the Pharrell event last night. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, this is, I was like, okay. He said he was, I, I, he's, his word is good. So <laughs> I saw him partying. Yeah, you hit the nigga with the emojis and to see like, like look at the emojis like 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 oh you let friend borrow some money but they yeah, they, they, they but they yeah. in a club buying yeah, bottles. You got to bump it up. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh fire, hey, bro. We still good. We still. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw him on the jetway or runway. You know, coming coming here this morning, uh, early in the morning. So man, we appreciate you for coming on the show. I am a man of my word. I'm set up uh, through, be through, here. I'm here. Through, through and through. Through and through. Um. Now one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the platform is because you know obviously we our platform is helping people of color build wealth. And one of the things that's very uh, either under under talked about or just uh, not understood is, you know, growing a business to the point where you can ultimately exit said business. Right. When we see it happen in our community, people get labeled as a sellout or maybe not for the culture and, you know, all sorts of things, because they just don't understand that that is literally quintessential business. Right. You build this thing that's independent of you. You have your social. It has a tax ID number. You build it add value, exit it. If you want to do it again, do it again, or just live your life, right? So uh, I definitely want to talk about that on the show. But before we get into that, tell little, uh, people a little bit about who you are and kind of your backstory. Man, long story. Long story short, though, I'm just a kid from Jamaica. Uh, just got back from Jamaica. Just got back from Jamaica. It was oh, a vibe. Yeah, 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 I saw y'all, man. I yeah, saw y'all. Yeah. Not that side of Jamaica. I was <laughs> over another side of Jamaica. Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, long story short, um, parents came over here, you know, just hustled. Uh, we moved into a three-bedroom house. It sounds mm -hmm. better than it really is because mm -hmm. we, my family just occupied one room out of the three-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, two rooms had other families. And so just humble yeah. beginning. Parents worked super hard. Um, taught me education and I just started entrepreneurship. Parents didn't have enough money to support my eyes. And so they're like, look, if you could go get it, we'll make it happen. And just be one of those kids selling candy from middle school, cutting grass, doing all that, mm -hmm. selling CDs, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, long story short, that just kind of prompted me. Got here to ATL and what um, occupied a lot of my young adult life is learning about private equity. Through another Jamaican guy who, at the time I met him, he just uh, sold his business for a little over $900 million. He raised about $320 million from Goldman Sachs and had a couple exits, a couple north of half a bill. And I was like, what? Like, Crazy. what is yeah. this? Yeah. Right. I'm over here talking about flipping cars and houses. <laughs> he flipping enterprises. Yeah, he right? flipping enterprises. Yeah. Not even business, bro. Enterprises, enterprises right? Yeah. yeah. And so I just kind of followed him for two and a half years, learned everything I can, I could. Every waking hour, bro, like, friends was going to clubs, sections. Mm -hmm. I was, like, going to his house, like, yeah, like I was I was locked in. 
and learned a lot uh, enough to go out and do it my own. And so mm-hmm. I raised a fundless, um, I was like a fundless sponsor, um, helped source deals, acquire in and out. What, what does that mean? Um, so traditional funds, you go and collect, uh, have the commitments for the money, mm-hmm. and then you go find the deals, and then you, on a per deal basis, you kind of get the boards or the investment committee's approval. Like, yeah, found this company, can we invest? Uh, it's a lot of politics, real hard to invest. Mm-hmm. Uh, the deal terms don't favor the person doing all the work. And so a fundless sponsor is you don't raise a fund first, but you get a, like high net worth individuals, people with access to capital, and you're like, hey, I'm going to go find this one deal. When I do find it, you want to come in, you get their commitments, so you find the deal. So you have much more leverage in the opportunity. You don't have like a big board to commit to. You're not focused on fundraising. You actually focus on running the business. So I did that with, with him. I actually helped him um, in the process. He invested in the company for about $7 million. About two years later, he sold it for $27 million and netted twenty. And I was like, I could do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that started me down the process of buying and selling businesses. No, so so tell us about, uh, I guess, what you would call your most memorable memorable experience um, as you started the process of trying to do it on your own. I, I think I've heard you tell the story a little bit, so I just kind of I kind of want to dive into that a little bit. Yeah, so like I cut the recent years out of my story. I ended up doing that, went ups and downs, almost almost went bankrupt a couple of times. We recently um, scaled up our ecom brand, got mm-hmm. acquired two years ago. And now we're coaching, but all the game and all the lessons that happened along the way is kind of like, even the bads were great memorable lessons, right? Yeah. It's like everything in life happens for you, not to mm-hmm. you. Yep. And so probably the most memorable is the worst one is um, I was, I put out five offers to buy a business. I'm like, yeah, I could do this on my own. Mm-hmm. I'm watching these cats make $20 million in two years. Mm-hmm. I'm doing something to work. I'm like right next to them. Like I'm, I'm big in my head up. Like, I got this, bro. Yeah. So found a company. Uh, it was about thirteen point eight million dollar deal. Got all the financing committed and all that stuff. Got it to the finish line. Uh, the deal failed. I got stuck with about a quarter million dollar, like two hundred and forty k in debt. Bro, I was depressed for about three weeks. Didn't like flew down to uh, uh, Florida with my girl at the time in her room, just chilling. Like, oh man, I'm a failure. You know us, bro. I'm on at social at the time was Facebook. Like I'm the, telling everybody, yeah, boy, I'm about to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm about to come yeah, up, yeah. boy. Yeah, let me yeah. tell you about this. this I'm about yeah. to be a multimillionaire, yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. And then man, I felt so embarrassed. My ego was shot. I felt like I was a fraud. Like, and I just left corporate. So I'm like, damn, boy, I gotta go update my resume. <laughs> I can't come. Two fifty in the hole will change things. Right. Yeah. yeah. I ended up not. Uh, my my wife now was my girl then. Gave me some really solid advice. It was the simplest thing. She was like, "Bro, you raised about fourteen million dollars in forty days. Certainly, you could figure out how to come up with two hundred and forty k." Like you so right. <laughs> <laughs> like it's different though. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. just had to go get millions of dollars. But now that I actually. You know, like the fear of loss is, is more powerful than the fear of gain, mm-hmm. right? right? Or the opportunity to gain. So it's like, it's consuming me. And I was like, yo, that perspective was key. That's wifey, by the way. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now, great advice. Let me go make this happen. So we figured it out. And what was so key about that, it was my first year of entrepreneurship. Like the biggest slap in the face I've ever gotten. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I needed to go through that then. Because if I had gone through something smaller, I probably wouldn't have this much courage and right. belief in myself to right. get through anything, right? It's kind of like I've come up with challenges across, and I'm like, yo, if I was, if I dealt with that, certainly I could deal mm-hmm. with this. So, thousand percent, yeah. So the down was actually one of the most mo- memorable moments because, like that, that champions me and keeps mm-hmm. me going through like all the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Makes sense. So now that I had that context, um, and granted, I know you personally. You know, we text yeah, and all yeah. that so. But what five, it helped five minute voice notes <laughs> literally on the yeah. last episode, she said exact time amount. She said, she said five minutes, she too. said exactly five minutes on the last episode. Yeah, so, the good news, I'm consistent. There That's the go. good news, Not but like, me. <laughs> you can just consistently do two minutes. It'd be fire though. The problem is when your phone, uh, yeah, 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 up, yeah, like, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like you listening and while you walking through the house, like, this is good. A minute and 45 seconds is like, oh, the phone shuts down. I was uh, like, now nah, I gotta go through the whole thing. Like, fast forward, you know, they've upgraded the voices. They got Appar- apparently, they can t- you can two exit now. I, my race at the last episode, she said you can two exit so that's the two hack. X speed. I don't know how to do it yet. I should have asked her before that's we should have to be being a uh, friend of George. Yeah, literally, if you like that, it would, it would, it would, so it would increase the validity of the friendship because now I will listen to everything, I won't get upset. 
yeah, yeah. That's that. I know it's a four star show. Listen to. Yeah, I just call them. I just call them out there. Like call me immediately. Like yeah, three, three, three and a minute, three and a half minutes. What's up, bro? Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just give it a summer. I'm like, no, I put in the three minutes. You gonna go back and listen to that three minutes? Um, but, but yeah. But what what it made me think about is so you probably started Fresh Heritage with the intention of exiting. 100%. Right? So you went into, uh, you know, we always get the cliche, start with the end of mind, but almost no entrepreneur does that. 100%. Um, right? So that's 100% right. So I help support a bunch of people like him, find opportunities and invest in them mm -hmm. for a while, yeah. de help deploy about $50 million in just like acquiring businesses, investing in business, etc. And I realized that the, the person who was winning and had the least stress was the person on the other side receiving the checks. So like not a VC invested company because you get boards and a bunch of different things, mm -hmm. but like a true private equity, just like normal seven, eight figure business mm -hmm. where someone's buying you out and you just get a lump sum of cash. Like you are winning. It's also about mm -hmm. breakfast. Difference between VC and private equity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we could chat about that. I'm a big fan of private equity, not so much VC. Same. Now, now, now after, after a few duds, I'm, I'm a fan yeah. of private equity too. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that's the sidebar. We come back to it. So like, I was like, I, I got to do this on the other side now. It's called being an operator, right? Yeah. And so I was like, I got to be an operator of a business. Just an investor is not, not where it's at. The economics didn't work out the same. So I had a one-page business plan to get acquired in three to five years. We did it in four. Um, and the person who I said we should get acquired by, we got acquired by him. Talking so about like, intentional. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it worked, bro. That's lit. So like I, I talk about this concept in the court in my uh, coaching call having a north star. That's essentially what that is. Mm -hmm. Starting with the end in mind and taking steps towards that, but being intentional. Like every major decision, mm -hmm. you're not chasing a short term win. Right. You're chasing does this and does this decision get me closer to that north star or away from it? And making sure all of the uh, decisions we made were intentional by getting there in purpose. And so because we did that, we had we knew what direction we was going in. Right. Everything kind of worked out. Dope. Yeah. And like, that's so important because as, as most entrepreneurs do, they solve a short term problem, but they end up uh, uh, making a longer, longer term challenge by solving that short term problem in the way that they're solving it. So they let a short term solution equate to a long term challenge. I don't think a lot, a lot of people uh, think about that enough, especially because most people are not trying to exit the business. Most people are like, I just want to make six figures. Mm -hmm. Cool. But like, are you going to operate that business for the rest of your life? You know, you know what I'm saying? Because like, you don't have necessarily a retirement plan in this small business. So uh, I do want to have that private equity versus VC conversation because I am new to private equity investing or VC investing. George has been beating down my door like, yo, you need to start investing in private equity. Um, so can you let us know what, the, 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 what you think your, the, the main differences are between VC and, and private equity? Yeah. And then um, a sidebar to come back to, too, yeah. is just like the why the selling makes sense right okay. Why the long-term decisions and so well, let's do that first and then we'll go back yeah. all right so um kind of they're all together so the best way to create wealth in america is through private equity through this method i call abs right like mm -hmm. everyone wants six packs abs yeah. acquire assets in a business mm -hmm. or acquire equity in an asset like a business mm -hmm. uh, build up the value of that asset sell some or all of it real simple so like the Elon Musk of the world, the richest people in America, Elon Musk, mm -hmm. the Zuckerbergs, all they did was acquire assets in an entity, a business entity, mm -hmm. um, build up the value, sell it. So whether mm -hmm. it's PayPal, Tesla, Facebook, et cetera, you can go and exit uh, publicly through an IPO or privately through selling like you sold PayPal. Um, so that pool of money, it's like the biggest pool of money and the biggest opportunity. The VC route, they pick, uh, home runs they're trying to mm -hmm. you, you got to cash out for billions in order right, for the home. economics to work yeah with every kind of vc investment they're looking to return the whole fund so a hundred million dollar fund needs to get a hundred million dollar exit from their portion of the company with every investment so they're swinging for the fences oftentimes the you know five percent of the businesses that win all the other 95 got to shut down because they're so pressed on gas they're not building real businesses mm -hmm. private equity now it's a little bit more moderate where you're trying to get singles and doubles or probably even triples. So they're looking for seven, eight and nine figure exits and a broader majority of those win. So it's not like you're trying to get a billion dollar business, but you're trying to keep as many as profitable to an exit as possible. And so like from an economic standpoint, it's just it's a higher percentage win to create wealth that way versus trying to swing for the fence. Because if you see some of the VC investments like 
um, the funds or uh, VC um, VC founders they have failed startup after failed startup before they win. Mm -hmm. Versus a private equity guy, they have exit after exit after exit, and they just stack. Maybe it's a five million dollar exit, then a fifteen, then a fifty. Yeah. So it's just a more predictable path to continue building a business. Yeah, because I remember, I remember like it was yesterday in, in Miami because I think y'all had met for the first time. We said Neo's mastermind. Mm -hmm. Me and you had grabbed about the E. He walked over for a second. Mm -hmm. And um, you talk asking about like some tax stuff or whatever. And then, and then when he left, we were talking about like I'll tell you about like I'll show you um, like some of my trades that day or whatever. Like, damn, this is crazy or whatever. And then I was asking you, I was like, well, so what do you do? Are you like gonna invest? Whatever. He was just like, he was just like, well, I mean, right now I'm kind of like I just got this thing figured out where I know how to go into a business, add value, and exit the business, and I'll do that. And, and maybe once I'm just sitting on so much money I, that, that I need to do something with it, I can you know maybe move into the stock market or whatever. But it's kind of a paradigm shift because for me, I had I was just starting to get into like private equity investing, right? And I was like, but it makes so much sense because you think about the stock market, right? I always try to articulate to people when you own a share or a unit of ownership in a company, you're you're essentially saying I'm betting on this business to win, but you are just so far away from like being close to the business, right? So it's like, okay, well, if that's the, that's the model of building wealth. How can I get closer, right? to that same logic, right? How can I get closer to right. the business? Nothing, there's nothing closer than owning the business and exiting it, right? And that was the paradigm shift that I had. It's like, it's all the same. Just like, how close are you to the business? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, to the previous kind of pivot uh, combo, the economics is so crazy. So, like, most people, as you mentioned in the opening, like, yo, if you sell your business, you're black, it's a, you're a sellout, mm -hmm. right? And so it's really because people don't understand, one, that, all the wealthiest black people in the world do this, right? Robert when, Smith. When it mm -hmm. talks to Robert Smith, the Jay-Z's, the Rihanna's, like, you know them for entertainment, but they built their wealth through acquiring an a, a, a equity and an asset title, building up the value of title, selling it. Same with the champagne company. Same with Fenty. Same with, you know, it's the game plan. And so the thing about that is you don't need to know coding. You don't need hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars to start an e -com brand you could do that with a credit card right 25 50k you can get a brand up and running if you turn that thing into doing a million dollars a year and let's say you're netting 30 percent, right you're doing 300k as a owner you probably don't take home the 300k you probably got to reinvest in inventory machinery invest in mastermind let's say you keep 200 grand from that mm -hmm. now if you were to go sell that same business and on the 300k we'll come back to what adjusted taxes are but you can actually sell it for like 400k in profit for the year at like a four times multiple very easy mm -hmm. you make 1.6 is that right yeah, yeah. One point for, so you would take eight years to get that lump sum of cash that you would if you just sold your business and we're not even factoring in the cost value of money into that equation because if i have 1.6 million dollars today right. versus 200 dollars a year i can get a 10 percent return on that 1.6 easily in the stock market now i'm making uh you know is that a hundred and sixty thousand? That's a hundred and sixty. Yeah. Now, now, now you're making now you're making a hundred and sixty thousand. So you're forty thousand dollars short. But now you're, now you're not doing nothing. now you're not doing nothing. nothing. Not only that, we're not incorporating risk. Just think about how business changed just three years ago during the yeah, recession. That's if, they, right? that's if your business is streamlined the whole time. If yeah. it's just consistent, right? Yeah, yeah. But think about how business was great three years ago, and now ads change, iOS updates, and people don't have the recession money no more. Like. Everyone's business is down. So think mm -hmm. about how easy it would be to just get eight years of money right now. Don't have to worry about it. Give your give your money to someone like y'all. Get that 160 grand on autopilot. You could go live your life. Mm -hmm. Or now you have eight years to go figure out your next thing. So like yeah. people just don't get it. Yeah. It makes so much more sense. To, to that end, when you exited your business, right, you went on a sabbatical, right, for a little bit. Like a six month sabbatical. A six month sabbatical. Just oh, I just I got this lump sum of money. I can just sit sit, sit around, sit. hang out a, with my daughter, hang out with my wife. It was the best thing. We got a we got a Spanish nanny came to the house, watched my daughter, taught her Spanish. We got to explore the city. We were living on the beach. Mm -hmm. Got to enjoy that. That kind of was lit. I was thinking, that kind of was I'm, lit. I, so yeah, he's not living there now, right? I'm not. I was glad. I'm mad I didn't make it down to Miami while you're still living there. I was that like, kinda I, I was was like yeah, lit. this shit was fire. That kind of was lit, bro. It was a, literally a resort. We had beach service, pool service. It was like, what? We would travel to go visit places like this. It was lit. Um, so that was cool. But the best thing is, like, yo, I got to see my daughter take her first steps. Mm -hmm. Like, I got to just be present. And so right. oftentimes, successful people have to trade, like, am I going to make money or am I going to be like a present father, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I could actually make money to afford to put my kid in private school, but actually be there with her too. 
this is a win-win. Right. And so I didn't have that option where you grind in 12 hours a day, jumping on flights all over the place. So I finally got an opportunity to sit still, and that would not have happened. I would not have seen my daughter take her first steps if it wasn't for the position we're in to sell our business. So let me ask you this. You mentioned uh, the process of acquiring assets, building up value, and then ultimately setting, selling. How do you build up value in the business? Or what's some of the best ways you've seen people build up true value in a business so that they can start to exit? That's a great question. A lot of people get that wrong. And so growing revenue is not the same as growing enterprise value. Okay. Talk about it. Yep. Yeah. This is actually for a friend question, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we, we, we just sharing gems here. Yeah. So like all revenues and credit equal. So um, for example, uh, community is a, you, you essentially have to create something that I call um, strategic value, mm. largely through community. And so bigger businesses, they can't create, they can't start like we can, but those are the valuable assets. Like, um, like Procter and Gamble may drop ten million dollars in a Super Bowl commercial to try to get in front of black people. Mm -hmm. Foot Locker may drop whatever, whatever to try to get in front of people, and they still won't acquire a hundred thousand customers. They may get some eyes on it. Mm -hmm. So, what we do as small business owners, and I hate to use the term small, but under two hundred employees, right? Mm -hmm. We're nimble. We could build community. We create Raven fans. So when you think about like Native Deodorant that built up one product got acquired for a hundred million dollars, I use their deodorant. Right, it's because people love it. Yeah, people love it. They post it. They tag it. Like big businesses, there. If you ever look at their social, their social suck. Yeah, and you go look at someone who's doing a couple million dollars a year. Social up to the roof. Off yeah, the roof. Lives jumping. Like they want that. They can't create it because people who work at corporate are managers. They're not founders. And so what the value is is building not only revenue but having that north star of this is an enterprise value. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's okay to get slower on revenue but build up other metrics. So like repeat customer rate, right? That builds up your enterprise value. Uh, your your lack of dependence on one paid source of traffic. So if you're only dependent on Facebook ads, if you spend a 50% of your revenue on ads and you're scaling, mm -hmm. that's not that valuable as someone who's only spending 10% of their money on ads, but they're their consistent revenue. And so the money you generate from a re reoccurring revenue stream is about a 10 to 15x exit multiple. <sighs> The money you create from just one source dependent like Facebook ads is like a 2.5 multiple. The money you do, uh, you get from like an Amazon store is like 3 to 4x multiple. So understanding that I, I got these other ways I could grow. I could go deep on ads. I could go build up email. I could go Amazon. I could do whatever. Let me pick the two that are most valuable and focus on that. Because even if I only get an extra million dollars in this one that's worth 10x, it's going to be more valuable than mm -hmm. if I get an extra five mil over here. So it's about being intentional about how you go out and get revenue. That even makes us think about like our community that we have, right? We have like an annual subscription or a monthly subscription is like, and for the while it was like, it was like trying to hard to justify like spending ads to drive traffic for a monthly membership. But what I also kind of knew in the back of my head is like, is number one, the durability of that type of the recurring revenue. But two, when you, to your point, if you want to go and sell your business or whatever, it's like, oh, you have 3000 people paying you $99 a month. That's way more valuable than these one time, you know, 99, 997 or whatever. But on the front end, as a small business owner, it's like you're probably gonna lose flow. money to yeah, acquire right, those cash flow, yeah, 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 cash flow, which is why it's great to have other lines of business. But it's like, as we think about our campaigns for next year, I think going back to that and putting it on autopilot, mm -hmm. right, and just knowing, like, okay, cool, we can't, we can't really worry about that in terms of like today's dollars. We have other ways to make our money in terms of today's dollars. And then knowing what that can mean for the business long term is important to build that up. And I'm, I'm a big per, I'm a big um, believer of just asking the right question. So if I know ultimately the reoccurring revenue is where we need to be, mm -hmm. but cash flow sucks up front, and I love profit, how can we do both? So what I did was focused on front end acquisition, yeah, just to get the quick wins, mm -hmm. build up the build up the customer base, get to the hundred thousand customers as fast as possible, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then on the back end, for any second or third purchase, we were heavily pushing membership. So we kind of had two funnels going where we're always going out and acquiring customers. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about subscription because the commitment's there. It kills conversion, et cetera. Mm -hmm. After no, we, no, no, we no. <laughs> right. That right there, right there's a bar. Right. Jesus Christ, we had no idea. You can literally charge somebody one time payment of nine ninety seven, and they'll pay it for one time. Or you can tell them it's ninety seven dollars a month, and then like, I'm out. I'm out. Right. Like you can Gone. cancel in three months. Like you know, like, like, right? Yeah. So it's all testing, right? Especially our people, 
Um, so there are some best practices because I don't think I, I, I shared our brand was Fresh Heritage. We sold uh, beard grooming products for black men. Mm. Um, but internally, that was our external uh, kind of mission. Internally, we said we're building a community of high performance black men. We wanted to build 100,000 community of high performance black men. Mm. What we learned from that is communication and words are important. So our customers hate membership programs. Mm -hmm. Yes. They love being in a club, though. <laughs> they yeah. love being in a they love being in something that has perks right. so we reposition what we're doing is not like an ass yo let me get this subscription but it's like nah bro you a vip member now like pull up so that helped the, me the message and that's good a lot. yeah that's good okay. but we also had to deliver it so what does being a part of a vip membership look like so outside of just selling bear care products we had quarterly meetups where uh, part of the like part of the the essential problem with men were like you felt alone, right? When you mm -hmm. start becoming like the six figure earner yeah. in your your neighborhood or mm -hmm. whatever, you, we don't have like two people to just like chat, right? right. Mm -hmm. That's not common in a lot of areas, especially mm -hmm. if you live in like a random city. Yeah. So we curated these events where it'd be virtual. We'd be talking about business, talking about acquiring a business, access to capital, all the things that we care about, and mm -hmm. we would have local meetups. People would drive four hours to pull up. We had some persons like one dude just uh, sold 20% uh, of his business to Goldman for like 80 million, like $80 million value. Mm. Other people just made partner, like the youngest black partner yeah. of this law firm. So it's that kind of environment we were creating. So it really did feel like a VIP membership, mm -hmm. but we were monetizing that relationship through our products. So you didn't want to stop that membership, even if you didn't use the bear product because you were getting so much other um, like intrinsic value from the other stuff that we we're doing. Yeah. Gotcha. He was so he was one of the driving forces when I was like, remember, because I remember like it was just I was talking to you about the membership program. I was like, bro, I think I want to add a pro like incorporate like the ecosystem. Right. I was like, I want to like make it to where like I'm including a product as a part of the the membership. Right. And it's because I was like, this dude built up a three, 3 thousand uh, member, you know, community off of a beard product, essentially. Mm. Right. Because wow. that, then you get the best of both worlds. It's like. You get the tangibility, right? Because people love something tangible of a product, but then the access, right, of community or the illusion of access or whatever. So, like, just that hybrid when you can get it done right is extremely is extremely powerful. And then even if you sell physical products, add in, in a digital component to it, right? Mm -hmm. That was the key because it's like it's high leverage, right? Right. So to have three thousand people, four thousand, five thousand people on a monthly webinar where mm -hmm. you curate. Cats like you that tell you how to build wealth, say, tell you how to save on taxes yeah. for the people. So they're paying for a $25 beard oil, but they're getting so much more value that they otherwise couldn't source themselves. Yeah. And they're doing it with a community of other people who are on the same path as them. Because people want to have shared mission in life. You don't want to go, go about life on your own. As we always like to say, you can survive without community, but you can't thrive without community. Mm. Period. Period. Yeah. Um, so when you think about... Let's say like a, a a founder, right? Who, you know, is already in the middle of the business, and they didn't start with the end in mind, and they kind of like, but they realize like, man, I gotta get myself out of this, right? I gotta figure out how I can add the strategic value. What would you tell to the founder that's overworked, burnt out? It's like they have a good product or a good service, but they just they didn't have a, a gamal, right? And you know, when they started their business, what can they do to start walking back some of those decisions to ultimately build a business that they can exit one day? Hey, aren't you tired of buying courses in those emotional states when you want to get a result, but then you actually don't do anything with the course? Do you know on average, the completion rate for a course is about 2%? But here's the thing, it's not entirely your fault. The problem is you buy the course, but you don't have access to the source who actually created it. See, that's why we're doing something different. With the Melon and Millionaire Club, you're not just gonna get access to courses. You'll get access to the people who created it so you can get your questions answered. Because it's not just about learning, it's about taking that, that information so you can start earning. So the Melon and Millionaire Club is gonna give you access to courses, but not just that, it's an entire university of information. We have financial flicks, we have all pre, uh, hundreds of previous recordings, but more than that, y'all, we have an amazing community of people just like you who are trying to become a first generation millionaire. So like GA said, like you can survive without community, but you can't thrive without community. So this is the place you need to be, right? 100%, because here's the thing. 
if it was just about information, we'd all be billionaires with six packs. So that's why every single Monday, we're gonna set the tone for your week with Melanin Millionaire Mondays, where our entire community is gonna meet up, the energy is gonna be high, we're gonna set the intention for what we're gonna execute on so we can move the needle forward, and Carter and I and the rest of our team can keep you accountable. So, so that's enough information. You see the rest <laughs> in the club. All you gotta do, click the link below, sign up, and start your journey to your first millionaire year. Let's get it. Man. Let's go. If they want to do that so right now i coach well this year we did about 33 34 million dollars i was telling you mm -hmm. and we coach um six figure earners that want to build seven figure brands or seven figure brands that want to do more mm -hmm. and all the time you know our biggest kind of growth opportunity we helped one founder add about 1.1 million dollars to their business mm -hmm. they're working less in all cases people are making more while working less so like founders are doing too much and so what they don't recognize is how the activities that they're doing are useless towards the outcomes they want. Mm -hmm. Well, one, they don't have a, a clear outcome. So they're doing mm -hmm. whatever looks good or shiny. Mm -hmm. So identifying, like, what do you actually want? What's the ideal life looking like? All that kind of stuff. How, how often do you want to work? How often yeah. do you want to be home? And then creating a plan for that. So it's usually not recognizing uh, what products are your best sellers. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes you'd be like, yo, what's your best seller? We interview everybody's application. What's your three top selling products that's mm -hmm. never on their home screen? You got to go search for it. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I'm like, okay, is it really? Yeah. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you? It, it's so smart that, it, that, they don't, that they don't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. People want this product. Instead of making them go look for it, because you know only about 50% of people actually scroll, mm -hmm. just put it as soon as they hit it. Oh, shoot. Sales hit. You know, you know what it mm -hmm. probably is, though? It's probably like... They're like, oh, well, this product is fine. We don't got to worry about yeah, that. Yeah, we need to amplify we, these we, other we, ones, we, which we, is what business that. owners do. Like, if something is working, they just ignore it and focus on things that's not working. 100%. Right. Yeah. There's this cool analogy I heard. Um, a pastor actually was talking about it. Uh, they had a underperforming kid. They were like a C student, but mm -hmm. they were really good at a sport. And so most parents would try to focus on getting the math tutor to get their grades up. They're like, no, get the coach. Get the sports coach. Yeah. Like he's okay here. That's not the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're trying to build build up and focus on mediocrity. Like focus on the genius. Yeah. And so that's kind of what you got to do. The products that's working, like this, a sunk uh, sunk cost fallacy. Or what they do is they buy other products, and they're like, "Damn, I got a hundred grand of this slow moving stuff over here. I gotta I gotta bring this in my feed more. I gotta promote this more so I can get back my money." And that takes away from the eyes on the products that everyone mm -hmm. wants. So we call these products hit records. So these are the things that. You know, the, the Jay-Z songs that's been going for a decade, the Drakes that always hit. Mm -hmm. You want to find three to five hit records to build a seven-figure business on instead of trying to have all these little other songs on, on, the, on the tracks that nobody wants. Nobody listens to. Yeah. Nobody listens to. You skip right over these, but yeah. they keep promoting yeah. these because they want to get the sales up yeah. instead of just focusing over here. Creativity and ego, right? It's like, it's like so entrepreneurs, well, like, as you 100%. know, the, re the reason why it's founder and CEO is like most founders don't usually make good CEOs in a, in a lot in a lot of ways, right? Too creative. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> yeah, so this ideas. is working so good. Let me try to find something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Nah, fam, just let's, let's stay right here. Yeah, stay right here. Yeah. Let's, let's get comfortable. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So I I heard this quote that says, um, "If you're valuable to your business, then your business is not valuable." Right. As somebody that wants to exit a business, how do you? If you know, so many people built their business around them mm -hmm. right how do you like reel that back in and like imp implement some people or some strategies so that your business can become valuable because if somebody's trying to buy your business they say everything's revolved around you like bro if we take you out there's nothing here correct so how do how do you coach that or help people with that yeah i, I heard someone articulate this well and it's like you know it's perfectly fine at first, you're the you're the asset to your business, mm. but at a certain point, you become the liability, which mm. we were talking about, right? And so, mm. if the business depends you to generate revenue, you don't have a business; you just have a high paying job. Right. And so, what we would do to start is lead with founder story, shared mission, all that kind of stuff. You get people on board, and in doing so, you then find super users or ambassadors, influencers, content creators who are a part of your mission, share your values, love your story you start slowly incorporating them in. So like at first, I was on the first ads. I needed to, it's easy, people mm -hmm. connect with my story, I could tell the story better. But over time, we found people who were super users of our product that we said, hey, you know what? I'd love to just have you do one piece of content a, a month, one piece of content a week. And before you know it, like the year and a half before we sold the business, I wasn't on any ads. It was all mm -hmm. 
super fans and super users who are like ambassadors of the products. So that's how you do with the marketing. Uh, the other big thing was I've spent, I've managed about $3 million on ads um, in like my entrepreneurial life. I am very proficient with ads. Yeah. Someone else buying the business may not have that comfort zone. So what I did was at first we outsourced an agency who was white mm -hmm. because a big a red flag when you go sell a business is, well, you got to identify risk and fix those risks. So a big red flag is like, yo, this is a black owned brand. A black dude's running it. We don't understand business because the majority of the people who buy businesses have the, and have the money to buy businesses don't look like us. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let me get in their mind and figure out what would prevent them from wanting to move forward. So I hired a white creative agency to run the business, run the ads, run the emails, just so I could prove this is me running it. Mm -hmm. I'm able to duplicate it to someone who has no idea what the culture is about. Right. This is a systemized process or so remove the risk. Mm. So just identifying like, yo, what are the things that are going to get in the way? What are the things that I'm too intimately involved in and creating a plan and a process to outsource it? Systematically remove yeah. yourself. And what's dope about the marketing piece is that now you're highlighting your top students, which make them even more like, like imagine if Nike put me on an ad. Yeah. I'm, I'm loyal to Nike right now. Oh, you damn. put me on an ad, it's over with. 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that, that was actually a really important point you made because we would be getting people like, yo, my this chick from high school that I used to have a crush on just saw me on the ad, bro. Like, yeah. and my man was doing ads left and right after that. Right? Yeah. So that yeah. was the thing. Like, uh, you make a good point. Like, the purpose of the brand is not to be the hero; it's to support the hero and the heroes of your customers. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really simple way of uplifting our high performance men mm -hmm. who would love exposure, want to put their value out in the world, want to be heard and want to be seen. Where they could just use our platform to do so. So that was a really good value prop. Perfectly aligns to some things we talked about with twenty twenty four with the ambassadors and who. Oh, like, okay. dude! I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see who you. Get, I see who you get your ideas from. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, still my ideas. Yeah. Right? Hey, <laughs> man, we go get. <laughs> we get my voice notes by Carter, we, bro. Uh, I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we go back and forth for sure. Uh, that's, that's, that's the only kind of friendships you gotta have. Right? That's, that's, that's the only friendships I want to have. We're yeah. not pitching it. Uh, Back and forth, great ideas, and I don't want to be a part of it. But, but no, that that that's huge, man. That's huge because, like, yeah, again, like as a high value entrepreneur, like it's as simple as something putting Nike put me on the ad. I would quadruple my spend with them, one hundred percent, easily, one hundred percent. And that's and that's speaking of which, like that that in and of itself, even people like even if you're not putting it out there, because I don't think it has to be formal. Like, hey, we typically amplify our people, but if they just see it. Right, that's going to keep them one is staying indoctrinated with the brand because they think, oh, like they typically amplify their people. Let me let them know I'm one of their people, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and get results because especially in a, a, in a community like what we do, right? We're going to be amplifying people who got results, who achieve certain net worth milestones, which then creates a self fulfilling prophecy. Is like, oh, if I hit this milestone, I might be one of the ones 100%. that they. Yeah, and that's the key in building the community. Like even the thing we're doing now, mm -hmm. it's like how can we? Who are our core people? that have a value similar to us, how could we right. be different from what's out there? So like our people aren't young cats trying to get Lambos and just show off and do all that kind of stuff. Although mm -hmm. you certainly can with the money you're making, right? <laughs> don't get it twisted. Yeah, don't get it twisted. Like, get, get that whip. I got, I got a Lamborghini. He's yeah, talking bad whip. about me. <laughs> get that whip. It's about the motives though. Have the yeah. thing, but it's like yeah. what's driving you. And so our core people right now are people who are family oriented, right? Um, or have a future in a family. And they just want to like do good in the world. So we're not getting assholes rich. We're getting like good people rich. Yeah. That want to buy back their time so they can actually enjoy their money with the thing that they're building. That's great messaging. Mm -hmm. So if someone wanted to like learn how to do this, I mean, obviously this podcast is a great episode and a great starting point. Like, Start here. Mm -hmm. Like what, 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 how could you help someone who's like, man, I got to, I got to get connected with this guy. Is there anything that you currently offer that someone could like, tap into your ecosystem to learn from you directly or from some type of program that you developed? I thought you would never ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, we have a system called the e-commerce blueprint. Essentially, the things that we've been documenting, mm -hmm. building a seven-figure brand, exiting a seven-figure brand, yep. and uh, all the things that we've accomplished, we share, we're able, we're not able to do it in a format other than through our mastermind based on like the not NDAs and stuff we signed. Yeah. So we're able to share in our coaching program, our process. Um, so yeah, that's it. So we work with people for six months, help them with their whole game plan from their marketing positioning, building out their community, mm -hmm. um, adding a reoccurring revenue to their business. Uh, our, our, our net income margins are about 46% at scale. 
So like double the average. Yeah, so, on e com that's really that's really is, good. It's some yeah. it's, it's some digital businesses. Yeah, we can info, info numbers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those info yeah. numbers, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like we're very intentional about our margins and how we did that, and so we share all this because cash flow is a big problem for uh, physical product companies. So we share all this in the six month coaching program where you get to work with us one on one. And we have all these resources like bookkeepers who get it, uh, developers, people who could set up your membership program. Right. We have an internal agency. Right. The agency actually started the agency who actually ran our ads and emails. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all that just kind of systemized and figured out for physical products owners. The only thing is you, it's not for beginners. It's for established brands already, typically doing 30, 40 K a month. Because when we were getting started, there were so many resources, but once we started hitting the snag, once you started at the half a million a year mark, right. seven figures a year mark, we were out on an island. Like we didn't have a place to go for like, yo, my Amex bill is a hundred grand. Right. I just lost my ad account. What do I do? How do I get that back? <clears throat> yo, I, we just, my, my manufacturer just burnt up and we just placed our biggest order. Is there some sort of insurance on this? Right. Mm -hmm. And so all these questions that you right. don't know, or I owe Shopify a hundred grand and they keep swiping my account daily and i'm paying them back 15 grand a month i didn't know that there's a way to get out of that right so we have all these proven things specifically for people who have like established business problems that we support them with dope, dope. so we'll link all that in the show notes um so people can tap in but i can tell you like from firsthand experience like i mean grant i'm i'm a friend so i get a different level you know of access, of access. <laughs> you know but i know the value of the program like but, but it's like this i'm his friend i still bought the program like yeah, yeah i was about you know to say saying? like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, you still you still yeah, cut like, the, like the one the one um the 44 the, the, the workshop me and Miss business did mm -hmm. he, he i got got that because he, he was like what you're doing a, a a four and a half hour five one Man, day take all my ideas bro yeah, yeah but the, i was like you know one day works that's, that's crazy he said he's talking about how much they made i said hey uh, uh, like, you know, when you get somebody an idea and they don't do it it's like bro like somebody just paid me fifteen thousand dollars for that idea and i gave you it for free you didn't do anything with it so yeah so yeah cause i did a because you know there's a challenge model then there's this model but it was a four and a half hour we ended up being five hours or whatever it was it was a good day. It was a good Saturday. Not a best. Not a bad. Not a bad day to spend. Hey, hey, hey send, send me the send me the stripe screenshot. I said, I need to talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so be yeah, about I mean those those like I said the greatest you know relationships to have people who can help you because what I like about especially now that I'm a father right so your daughter is now three. How old's your daughter? Yeah, she just turned three. She turned three, right? And Legend's about to be two, which is insane. Wow. Um, you know I resonated because I was like I was like okay I'm a going down this journey and I have to be more mindful of my time I could pass I can't be this run and gun entrepreneur all the time you know what I'm saying? I have to start structuring things in a way where we can own the business and not run the business right hiring the right people not not just throwing money at problems but making sure you have the right people in the right place so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor right like 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 next year we have our whole year planned out because it's like we don't want to like I look at it like a TV series right they create it and and then like a year later it releases. They get to actually enjoy the content they created, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? So it's like I want to enjoy the things that I'm building, not like always be in the middle of it and building a business that's sustainable, um, that's exitable, right? Which God knows, I can only imagine the scrutiny that could come from that if we find a way to exit melanin money, the the, the blackest possible business you could possibly have. <laughs> um, but it's just a partnership. We've partnered with yeah, we bigger, partner with with, yeah. the, with a bigger network to yeah. our reach. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. So y'all don't cancel back, us. Back to that messaging. Yeah, right, back to the messaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. We need to reach like because that's what other people don't people don't get. It's like a founder can only take it so 100%. far, right? Like but that's the reality. That though. Yeah, if you yeah. got, if you think you could serve the world, we don't have experiences running a billion dollar business, right? A hundred million dollar businesses. Well, right. I don't, right? Right. And so, like, if you have a vision that could serve that m amount of people, you need the budget and the resources to match your vision, right? And it's unfair, not only to you, but the people who don't have you mm -hmm. as customers or don't or not yet your customers because you're being selfish to try to do everything on your own. So like exiting is actually in service of the people you want to support mm. It's like our our acquirers were very good at international business. They were very mm. good at retail. Yeah, I had no experience doing that. So I would have botched that I would have fumbled the bag. Right. So now when people from Europe and people in all over the world were like, we would love your product. Now with this partnership, now they could bring it into those markets effortlessly, right? right? And execute at a level that I don't know how to. So that when the brand gets there in Amazon and on Walmart in Europe, like it's yep. how I would have loved it, but I just don't have the vision or the skills to do so. So 
I mean, exiting is really in service of the customer. Love it. Love it. So as we know, this is the Melanin Money Show. Thanks. Um, and our goal is to help as many people that look like us um, ultimately achieve their first one million in net worth and beyond. Um, and so we have people on the show who actually, right, have done it. Um, we like to ask them a very simple question. Um, what does being a melanin millionaire mean to you? Mm. I feel like I should have been prepared for this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just freedom, bro. Like business is going to be stressful. Mm-hmm. And just operating the same risk without the emotional impact of the potential downside outcome is this game changer. Like regardless of what you do, you're going to take L's and you're going to win. Mm-hmm. And so I remember um, losing our Facebook account, almost having to shut the business down, um, being maxed out on credit cards and needing some access to more capital, like losing sleep at night. Here I am trying to take care of my family. We got a house. We got mm-hmm. a car. Yep. And like my wife left her job. I was stressed the hell out. Mm-hmm. Now, the first time building this coaching business was the first time that I could actually do what was required for the business without losing sleep. I'm like taking L's and sleeping. like Because <laughs> I know like our, yeah. our yeah. main needs are good, like roof over our head, food, right. school bills, everything is set. And so like it's just operating out of a different place so that you could bring a better version of yourself into solving the problems of the world. Because you can't really solve problems yeah. out of scarcity as much as you can out of an abundance and safety mindset. So I think that's the most important thing for me. I'm not done working. I'm not yeah. I'm not done getting to the bag, but right. I could do it from a place of confidence and abundance now. I love that. And that's why you see for people who do exit business, like how do they do this other business? And this other business, other business, because they're doing it from a totally different vantage point. But man, we we appreciate that's actually one of the better answers for that question. Mm-hmm. But we appreciate you coming on the show. Flying in early from our bossel. Yes. Taking your Miami trip short. Early. About to um, catch a nap for this we're gonna award We're going to catch your vibe tonight. Yeah, we're going to catch your vibe tonight. Yeah, yeah. You know, our, one of our, our, our wonderful nominees. Yes, sir. Um, so, man, now nah, we're excited, man. Thank you for just being a pillar in the culture of, of doing things different, showing how business can be done at the highest level. Um, and that, you know, we can get, as my guy said, why, why should white guys have all the fun, right? Why should white guys you, have you're all the part, the You're the only person I know personally that I can think about when I when I read that book. Um, so, man, it's just an honor to have you on the show. It's an honor to call you a brother and a friend. And uh, let's have some fun tonight. And uh, for everyone listening, I appreciate the opportunity to share my message on the platform. And uh, you heard it here first. All of Georgia's good ideas came from <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Donna, cut that out. (laughs) (laughs) Edit. (laughs) I appreciate y'all. Peace. Peace.